Hey everyone, it's John Pollock with you. Welcome to Fight News Now. Coming up, we'll be taking a look at the Glory 31 event, which is happening in the Netherlands this coming Saturday. We're also going to be discussing the latest news as Paige Van Zant lands her next fight as she will be coming north of the border to Vancouver, British Columbia. And CM Punk is signed for his first UFC fight, which will be coming up in Cleveland this September. All that and more is coming your way on today's edition of Fight News Now. I am here with John Ramdean and Robin Black as we get set to head into the weekend and the fight has finally been announced guys. Phil Brooks, CM Punk is signed to fight Mickey Gall on September the 10th, part of UFC 203 in Cleveland, Ohio. So this is going to be the focus now. Everyone's going to get to see this guy fight and he's going to have an enormous spotlight on him. First of all, John, do you like the placement on this 203 card? It joins the heavyweight championship fight with Miocic and Overeem, as well as the Fabricio Verdun Ben Rothwell fight. Oh uh, yeah, I mean, you're just trying to bring in as many eyeballs as humanly possible, considering what's going down in early July with the three back-to-back -back shows, of course, culminating with UFC 200, going to be one of the biggest cards the UFC has ever had. And then on top of that, a couple of shows later, you have the Nathan Diaz, uh, Conor McGregor rematch. Which I don't think needed this. Yeah. I think that card mm. essentially, that's an event in and yeah. of itself. Th this card to me makes more sense to exactly. put him on there. He's not the main event, but he'll be, he's going to bring one crossover. He's going to bring an audience for it and it's in a supporting role. I'm just still not 100% convinced that we're going to see this fight happen. You know, you, I think a lot of people expected, okay, let's see with the Mike Jackson fight, and Mickey Gall fight, then you have what happens in that fight with Mickey Gall getting the victory and people are like, oh wow, I didn't realize this Mickey Gall was as advanced as he is. Sure. And word out of uh, Rufus Sport is that, there, according to Dave Meltzer, there's been 16 test fights for CM Punk and he got schooled on 15 of those fights. Now the cage door closes and this is a real animal. Mickey Gall wants to make a name off of CM Punk and he is going after this guy. So That's a uh, new one. We've never heard real animal. <laughs> yeah. Not an absolute. Yeah. Well, what if he's too animal. aggressive? Yeah, like, maybe. What if he gets too aggressive? Jim Miller's going to make sure he's not too yeah. aggressive. Yeah, well, fair enough. But this is a big night for him too. Now yeah. on his first big night, he did do very well, this kid, and looked very good. Uh, he this looks is nervous. an interesting one. Of course he looks nervous. This is, a nerv this is the nervous <laughs> business, man. Uh, I have tried to have different, you know, it's a real good thing if you can look at different perspectives, different people's opinions, and try to put yourself in, in, in that perspective. And I've looked at them, and I've been through just as a fan. I've been like, are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. what, uh, this guy doesn't know how to fight. To, I can relate to that. A guy chasing a dream, guy really wants to accomplish something. To, you know, this and guy I mean, had no idea what he was biting off. He never even really trained striking in his life. You can't fight, you can't play in the NFL or, or play at, in the NBA or fight in the UFC if you don't know how to fight. To, now I feel bad for this guy. He probably, you know, is in this situation where he has to do this thing. In a world of haters, he has 60% haters or 52% haters. But the truth is, hate and love are irrelevant mm -hmm. to selling pay-per-views or selling anything else. All you want is engagement and you want debate. And if people are sitting around at a barbecue and this guy thinks this is stupid and this guy thinks this is awesome, that's how you get people excited. He's in there, so long as he's not troubled by the fact that some people are wanting to prove everybody wrong and wanting to prove, shut people's mouths, as long as he just goes in there and goes, you know what, the martial arts are a beautiful thing. I've always dream dreamed of doing this and goes and does yeah. it. And Robin, you weren't fighting on a stage like the UFC and on pay-per-view, but I mean, in the Canadian mixed martial arts scene where I'm sure there were a lot of people that thought, who does this guy mm -hmm. think he is coming from a band that wants to fight that were rooting for your failure? Mm -hmm. Did you hear that? Did, were you able to, to separate that? I followed just... it. I saw it when Robin was making his pro debut. There were a lot of detractors. There are many people going after this guy because of his rock and roll yep. pass. However, you get in there, you get into the fire, you start getting people in the industry rallying behind them and now obviously all the support. Yeah. yeah, I mean, but yes, people did feel that way and I didn't, it didn't bother me in any way. And, and that's something when I look at Phil, he's like, and to the haters, the haters don't exist, they can't exist to you. you, they, you they can't matter to, and it is something he seems to notice. Proving people wrong does not help you. Going out into the world and saying, I'll shut, the, I'll prove these guys wrong, that doesn't make you better at anything. You have to go out there for the love of it. And people are, you know, and you learn to ignore it. But is know? his love the love of martial arts 
or is his love the love of performing in yeah. front of you know huge audiences? And that's well. Clear. To be fair, though, John, he had that option. Yeah. He walked away from that yeah, option. Right. This this guy could have. If you were sick of of the wrestling schedule, this guy could have gone into many other different fields. He had enough of a name and backing that you could have done a lot easier things in your life than this. It's and I think a lot of credit goes to that. He has spent a year and a half here at Rufus Sport when he could have got a job hosting television, going out doing movies, writing comic yeah. books. He has all of this at his disposal. And he chose to do True. an extremely difficult vocation the, and learn it at a very advanced there's, age. There's a few weird parts about it that no matter how you slice it are strange. And one of them being, if he was telling the truth, the guy lived up, grew up in a place where you just perform all the time. That's what wrestling is. But he's like day one of striking. There's no footage, no evidence, no coach anywhere who says this guy ever put a boxing glove on in his life. That's not somebody who loves fighting. Mm -hmm. That's not somebody who loves training or loves the martial arts. It's somebody who wants to be tested, and that's a beautiful thing, that's a wonderful thing, that's a reason to pay attention and cheer for him. But it's, it's a very strange thing. Uh, you know, I, again, I went through it, people were like, this guy wants to turn his celebrity status and go fight. Getting punched in the face by people way better than you in your underpants while people laugh at you and call you names is not going out and trying to do, <laughs> that's do, you do it despite that. You do it despite the fact that people want you to fail and despite them but not because of it you don't regardless it's all conjecture Duke says he's a wonderful guy the people who train with him say he's a hard worker is it likely that he's a good fighter it's highly unlikely that he's even a grassroots level fighter that's just how it is yeah. when you're in your late 30s no matter where you train Duke isn't in there you know Anthony Pettis isn't in there this guy who didn't know how to fight two years ago is in there but if he goes in enthusiastic and goes in to take this test regardless how he does he can hold his head up high he did something that all the people that are making fun of him would poop in their pants yeah. if they even thought about the it. only thing is you know being uh, an alpha male and coming from the world of entertainment and martial arts there's always ego involved it's something we've been taught in martial arts and that you have to get rid of the ego has he gotten rid of the ego or, or is it you know I've done a little bit of jujitsu I think I can tackle the mixed martial arts world and then you put on some gloves and you realize oh wow I'm not, not completely prepared for this but I'm going in anyways well you also learn now the footage we show is the footage that's out there they've done a great job of not having that out there and I think there's a lot of things they've done right Duke's a brilliant coach this guy's driven really hard to work I flip flop between are you kidding me to you know I want to see the guy do well and that has nothing to do with the fact that I work for the UFC <laughs> by the way you know what I mean this is a regular guy that at this point is going to take on some incredibly hard challenge in front of all these people half naked who are getting ready to laugh in his face and he's going to go do it I hope he's going to go do it I hope he does really well on the other side of the coin uh, a female fighter that was linked to be involved that the WWE was pursuing was Paige Van Zandt she has now been officially announced she'll be fighting August 27th SummerSlam is the week prior, so I think that eliminates her from doing any uh, pro wrestling involvement this mm -hmm. summer. She'll be fighting Beck Rawlings here in Vancouver on the Fox card. There's going to be two Fox events this coming summer, and this, this will be certainly, I think, the best platform to put Paige on coming off of Dancing with the Stars. And against Beck Rawlings, seeing how she comes back after that loss against Rose Namajunas, which was a very one-sided fight in the favor of Namajunas. Oh, yeah, no. Uh, I expect uh, Paige Van Zandt to come back on fire. I think she's getting... Learn from that loss, and we all saw what she was made of. If the fact that she has signed on the dotted line after taking the type of beating that she took against Rose speaks to her about her character. And again, this being a Fox show, you need you, you need the athletes that are going to draw the mainstream audience, and that's why Paige Van Zandt is on this card, and that's why Anthony Showtime Pettis is on this card. Yeah, this is going to be yeah, a fun excellent. card, man, in <laughs> Vancouver, BC. We got to go, right? Yeah, we got to go. And of course, Bellator Dynamite is coming up this weekend. It will be a combined mixed martial arts and kickboxing event Mike happening Chandler. on Spike TV. Rampage. Michael Chandler. Chandler will be taking on Patricky Pitbull Freite, and as well, we will be chatting about that later on. But as well, we have International Fight Week, which is coming up Thursday night, July 7th. It kicks off three straight nights of cards featuring Rafael Dos Anjos defending his lightweight championship against Eddie Alvarez. And if you're in Canada, you can watch it here on Fight Network.